And that's how I start my morning. My name is Scott Gerke, a resident of Key West, Florida, and a full-time DJ and event producer who lost all of his work due to the coronavirus. With no income and uncertainties of when things would start back up, I decided to move into my van permanently and tour the country for inspiration. In this series, I make it my goal to live like a local, one day party with them, and gain a new respect for the community and those who make it special. So it's been one month since I've moved out of Key West and into my van, and um, I gotta say, it's been an amazing journey so far. What's so great about living in a van is the places that I can stop to sleep. Currently, I'm in Lancaster, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and behind me is a petting zoo. And that is where I slept. I slept in the petting zoo parking lot. Uh, I slept in front of trains. I slept in front of um, pastures and farms and gas stations in Detroit, Michigan. I mean, the things that I've done have just been absolutely incredible. But it's a lot different when you're actually living in this thing full time. One of which is getting your mail. And I've learned a lot about that, making it a general delivery and then sending it to the post office. Um, because that is my address. My address is whatever nearest post office there is. Um, but I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the van. I'm just gonna show you what the van is like, what it's set up, or how it's set up. Um, it's set up just like many other vans. Let's just be real, I ripped everything off of YouTube in order to put this thing together. But for those of you who are interested in what my situation is like in this van, I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration, or I'm gonna give you a quick tour, and then after that, I'm gonna show you what it's been like living in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. I gotta say, it's been pretty, pretty incredible. So the first thing I should mention are the swivel seats. This one swivels, this one swivels. It allows me to just have a really nice relaxing area to get some work done, as well as eat, and, uh, it's definitely a big improvement from my last build. Well, as I mentioned, I am doing this in front of a petting zoo, so I must introduce to you Gus the goat and Karen the llama. Karen's bougie. <laughs> Gus is my kind of guy. Likes to eat candy, does not like hummus as I found out. And if it's not a vegetable, he'll eat it. So as I previously mentioned, it's pretty much set up like a lot of other vans. This is my fridge. What I do is I just slide it out and then I use this to keep it from falling out. This is also where I keep my electronics. There's a drawer back here that uh, keeps everything nice and secure. And then behind me is my kitchen. Kitchen right here. So the kitchen has where all my gray water goes. And this is uh, right here is where the sink and the stove are at. Stove running on propane. I haven't even set up the stove yet. Uh, the propane isn't hooked up. Uh, that's because I discovered this Instapot, thanks to my buddy Joey Silverpants. And it's been super easy to use. Uh, it does take up a lot of power, but uh, my battery system in here is able to support this thing. So it makes cooking really, really simple. So right here is where all my clothes go. Now this is a, a new uh, addition to the van that I just got put in a couple days ago uh, with the help of my friend Daniel who lives here in Lanc Lancaster County. Um, we're not done yet. There's still a lot of things that need to be done but uh, he put this together and I have like a little nightstand in the back right here which is nice just to put some things just like any other nightstand. Uh, basically this van is set up just like a house except 60 square feet. It's really tight but um, if you organize your space properly, it's, it's really not all that bad. This is a nature's head composting toilet. Uh, this is where the urine goes, this is where the poop goes. You open up the lid, flip up, down, you flip down the hatch, and then what's cool is there's peat moss in the poop area. And what happens is you turn this knob and it's stirs it all up and uh, in a couple months it just turns into dirt and it's not that bad. It's actually kind of fun. And then you can see a hose right there and there's a fan that uh, takes care of any of the smell. And right there is where I keep my electric skateboard just behind the driver's seat. 
And right here is a shelf just above the seats. It's a shelf, it does shelf things. And every morning, this is my process. I actually make espresso. I make a latte every morning thanks to my, my parents who got this espresso machine for me for Christmas this past year. Just pull it up, bada bing, bada boom. Whoops, is this thing recording? Mm. This right here is my water pump and the hoses go up. It's a water pump, it does water pump stuff. If you want to learn more about how to make it happen, Far Out Ride is the design I used to put it all together. See? Hello. So this is my bed. This is my AC. The AC is not powered by the van. It cannot handle the power. So what I do is I have what's called shore power, which is powered by either an outside generator or an electrical source from somebody's house or just a building. And this is what van dwellers like to call their garage. Right here is a Yeti Goal Zero, which is uh, the battery pack that I use to supply the entire van. It does both uh, 110 and 12 volt, powered by the solar up top, as well as the engine, if need be. And then right here is my hot water tank. This is a tankless water heater that allows me to take a hot shower. And then right here behind the battery is my water tank. I use a tank that goes above the wheel well. It's 22 gallons. It serves me perfectly for about three to four days. So right here I have some flares on both sides of the van in the back that allow me to sleep sideways. What it does is it opens up the back end of the van about eight inches, which gives me the perfect amount of space. I'm six foot three and um, I have about one or two inches to spare once I do sleep sideways. Now, if you're interested in this, Flare Space is the company that I used. Right here is a vent window. I have two of them, and it uh, allows me to just keep constant airflow. It is absolutely necessary to have constant airflow. I have a fan in there as well that I blow on me. And then this just allows cool air or hot air. <laughs> Let's be real. I'm living in a van in the middle of wherever I go. Just allows the air to flow constantly. It's very, very important. All right, let's check out the upstairs. All right, let me do this. Uh, it's a little bit dangerous up here, I'm not gonna lie. This right here is the AC unit. It's a Dometic Penguin. And then this right here are two 100 watt solar powers that helps power the battery downstairs that I mentioned. Right here is a cell phone antenna. It's a Weeboo cell phone antenna that allows me to go into uh, a little bit more remote places while uh, getting the best signal that I can. And what I'm sitting on right now is a bamboo roof rack that my buddy Joey Silverpants and I put together by just uh, sourcing some old bamboo in my backyard in Key West before I left. A uh, video on that, I think that was like the first video I actually made. So if you go back, you can see uh, us putting this thing together, it's really simple. And this roof rack is just a, a regular roof rack that I bought from a guy, a company called Voyager uh, in Palm Beach County, Florida. Pretty simple. That's pretty much the van. It's awesome up here. So that's pretty much it. I gotta be honest, the, uh, the van life situation has been uh, pretty incredible. Uh, like I've mentioned before, there are uh, some tweaks that I still need to make and uh, you know, it's, it is challenging. It's not, uh, it's not simple. Uh, a lot of people like to say it's romantic and you know, there's a lot of fantasies that go along with being in a van. And if you have the opportunity to do it, I highly, highly suggest it. Um, you just got to be patient. It teaches you to be patient and to think more about who you are and what you're doing. And that's kind of what the, the uh, motive is behind this journey is just to discover communities, discover people who, uh, who don't live the same way that I do. And I want to learn more about them and just appreciate uh, human nature a lot more. And being here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania has really taught me a lot because there are uh, the Amish and the Mennonite community living amongst modern day society. And that's very charming and very fun to watch because those are two completely different 
lifestyles just making it work and they all take care of each other uh, the Mennonite and the Amish uh, they get around on horse and buggy and modern day society gets around in the car so there's this constant movement of cars going around the horses and um, the way that the Amish and the Mennonite farm is with horses and they have these giant horses and mules that are plowing the land and doing everything that they need to do to produce uh, their produce. It's very, very fascinating. I've befriended a family who are Amish and they're helping me build out the rest of my van. The kids, I uh, absolutely adore. They have made me some shoe fly pie, which is really famous here in this town. Bread, they've given me some chicken eggs. Um, they made me cookies and this little 10 year old girl actually made some crates, which is gonna be a video for, uh, for some other time. The guy who's hap who, who happens to be helping me build my van builds crates for a living, that's what he does. He builds these crates and he sells them to, uh, to the market, to grocery stores. And so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of filming just on that because it's really cool to see that there is actually a human behind these crates that we see uh, filled with produce at the grocery store. So I'm gonna leave it just like this. This is my lifestyle right now. And um, I just wanted to share it with you. I wanted you to see what it's like for me to go through um, living in this van. And uh, right now I think it's important for me to give you some footage of what I've seen uh, living here in this town for about 10 days so far. And I'm not leaving anytime soon. I really, really like it here. One rusty nail cost you two hundred dollars. Oh, I've been trying to be what you want me to. Give me something I can see. Hey, to search up Tiger Gaming. Come closer. What are, you're a YouTuber? Tell us your name. Anthony. Anthony, what's your handle? What's the name of your YouTube channel? YouTube Gate. I mean, Tiger Gaming. Tiger Gaming. Yeah. Cool. All right. Everybody, subscribe to his channel, Tiger Gaming, and show that boy some love. Hey! Ada Ruth is on the move. So, basically what it is, is it's some crumble stuff with molasses on the inside. You see that? So it's just crumbles, pie crumbles with molasses, and it is super good. Super, super, super good. Oh, I've been working nine to five just to survive, and I won't keep quiet till someone brings me back.